Kristen with Nerdettes Newsstand, and today we are going to talk about I Am Not Starfire. I was able to get through it in about 24 hours, not bad for 170 pages, but I want to review it, I want to talk about some missed opportunities, and let you guys know it's not as bad as we thought, but it's definitely not good. Now, Let's first talk a little bit about the controversy because there are a few things I want to say. It's a very typical coming-of-age story with a very slim market. What I mean by that is there is plenty of cursing and, you know, flying of the birds. I, I don't care about that. But parents may. Parents may care. Now, with all of that being said, it's a little bit older of a book. Even say... 15, 16, 17. And then you have on top of it the, you know, kind of narrowing down of the market of the LGBTQ community. And then, of course, the goth overweight trope that's used. It's a very niche market, which means it's not going to sell. Not that I suspect it would off of this alone. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think this is great. I really, really don't. But I also think that the controversy is a little overblown. I said it in my previous video, the stuff about Mariko Tamaki being a self-insert is a weak, really weak criticism. They do self-inserts all the time, and I don't think this is a self-insert, really. I know you're going to show me the two pictures, but really, honestly, if you look up more than just that one picture of Mariko Tamaki, she's a lot slimmer. She's not fat. And... um. You know, looking at this, we see Mariko Tamaki has brown eyes, really always has those teal ends, right? Instead of black hair. She's half Asian. She's going to have black hair anyway. And she's got normal eyebrows as to where this is. All right. Yeah. So the girl in here is naturally a redhead, dyes her hair. She has green eyes and weird piercings and shaved brows. And, and so I don't really see this as a self-insert. I would say if that's your only criticism of it, then it's pretty weak. But there's plenty of criticism to be had. I'm just saying, look at it deeper. Look at it from a writing standpoint. And there's where the issues are going to lie, right? So, oh boy, where do we start? I don't think people would be as mad at this book if... Mandy wasn't fat. All of the reworks that have been done are really just making Mandy thinner. And I think the fact that she's heavy also set a lot of people off, which could have worked really well. It's a really huge, massive missed opportunity. They could have talked about beauty standards. They could have talked about eating disorders. But no, no. So <laughs> I, I, I think they should have. And another criticism that I want to talk about, the last one, is saying, you know, she's unlikable, so the story's not going to work. That's not true. I hate Damian Wayne. Like, I like him in Super Sons, but the rest of the time I hate Damian Wayne, yet I still read it. So I don't think that's really um, a fair criticism. And I will say for all of its faults, and we're going to go through its faults, it's not corporate panding, pandering like Snowflake and Safe Space. It's just a... Why a tale, right? It's just a coming of age tale. It is not specifically looking at the LGBT community and really, really trying to get money out of them. And I, and that's you know what we saw from you no know, uh, Trailblazer and Safe Place and Snowflake and yeah, yeah, that was bad. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm not going to show the whole thing, but it is like I said, it's a coming of age tale about. Mandy, whose mother is Starfire, we do get to see the Titans briefly. There's some, you know, talk about who her father is. Um, I, it's still never told. It really isn't. And I don't think it's Dick Grayson, even though they do joke about that. But he shows up, I think, twice. So why would he be in this child's life as a Titan if it wasn't for, you know, if he was the father? So I don't think it's that. We also do see at one point Starfire like dating some weird randos. And um, I, I think this could work. I'll make it a little bigger. Um, I think it could work if, and Mariko Tamaki is a very good writer. 
All right. She does very good when it comes to stories like Detective Comics or Wonder Woman. She's she's got the talent. And actually, I would say that this is even worse than Breaking Glass. And I hated Breaking Glass because of what they did for Harley Quinn. But at least we had the art to fall back on the beautiful art that was in Breaking Glass. This is just a mess. Just a whole lot of um, eating and the anti-Starfire. It's drilled over and over and over again that she is the anti-Starfire. She is, you know, from Metropolis, not from, uh, she's not from Tamaran. She is not able to have powers, though she does, by the end, have powers and saves the day. A fight, and that's where the writing really lacks here. A fight that her mother avoided for years and years and years. Mandy won in a matter of minutes. That's the issue. The issue is the writing. The issue is not because it's woke or this or that. It's not woke. Female is not necessarily woke. There's no pandering or preaching. It's not, oh, those eyebrows just drive me insane. Those are not cute. Um... Just because she gay, she's gay, there's nothing more than you'd see from a heterosexual couple in here. It's not necessarily along those lines of being woke. It's just bad. And, and I would venture to say boring. And that's a worse, that is a worse insult than anything. Is it's boring. It was hard to get through. I had to push myself to get through it. And one thing that drives me crazy is they took the Starfire from the Teen Titans Go. Like, Mariko Tamaki, you've been working at DC long enough. You should know better. You know better. Do you have the homework? Shut the fuck up. Do you have the homework? What? Like, I don't like when she talks that way. I don't like any of that. But, yeah, that's what's put in here. So, basically, we, you know, do this is tamarind vile spaghetti. Do you have the mustard? Do you like the spaghetti? Are you making the hot dogs? Are, shut up. Shut up. So, we end up meeting her best friend, who is Lincoln. And, um, I don't... I don't remember if he's gay or not. I'm assuming. I guess I just kind of assumed because it's current day comics. But um, yeah, I think so. I think so, if I remember correctly. Like, I, I, uh, and that's what I say about it being boring is because I space out. When I, when he can't keep me interested, I space out and I have no interest in reading your book. You have to keep me interested on each and every panel and page. And then you have like the Teen Titans groupies that show up every once in a while. And then you you get the story of, you know, all the Teen Titans groupies, why they bugged her, right? She is not going to college because she is um, going to France and she doesn't even speak French. She wants to drink coffee and read poetry. That shows you the worldview that this little girl has because It's not deep enough to know what she would actually do in France. She doesn't know. She doesn't have enough, you know, the ability to plan ahead. She didn't even plan to be able to communicate with people. But then we meet Claire. And Claire is her uh, first, you know, it's her crush, but they're partnered up on this, right? And um, she's got a crush on her and it's, And of course, you know, by the end, she's going to also like her back. Typically, if you're really in high school, it it seems very unlikely if you look at, you know, even even being uh, gracious here and saying 5% of the population is LGBT. It's very unlikely, but I digress. We get some, like, this looks okay. It's just not my art style. It's just not something I'm super interested in. And um, it ends up being, like, for a minute. And this feels almost like the Tila thing, okay? So, basically, we see her throw a fit eventually. And it's towards the end. But um, that she takes, she comes over, Claire does. 
She takes a picture with the Teen Titans because they're over there and she posts it on her social media. I don't see an issue with that, but it's like the Tila thing. She's throwing a fit because this is the generation of entitlement. This is the generation of it's all about me. One picture really doesn't hurt anyone, right? One picture really doesn't make anything so bad, but of course, the entitlement is there. So we kind of seen these through the preview, right? And, and I'm kind of flying through here just because I'm not going to go over it all because I think it's more important almost to talk about what they could have done, right? What they should have done. See, she gets all mad again because she invites her friend over. What? Is this how DC and Mariko Tamaki sees Girls, women, and it's a trope we just seen in Masters of the Universe. As entitled buttheads, as entitled bitches, as bratty. Like, why is this done so often now? I don't quite understand why it's so... You see, this is Doug the date. Like, she's dating and... uh, Okay, all right. Like, I think this panel is probably the prettiest one you're going to have throughout. But it's you know, one panel compared to 170 pages, right? So we see a lot of eating, a typical thing over and over again, a lot of eating, a lot of eating. And um, they could have also explored, I think, Starfire. They could have explored it and told it through her perspective as what it's like to raise a daughter that's different than you or told it through the perspective of Mandy and been like, okay, Well, here we go. You know, my mom left me alone for the weekend again because she's off in galaxy number nine fighting bad guys. I'm sick of being alone. But they don't really explore that. And they actually show, for the most part, that she's a pretty decent mom. That she, you know, this is social media. Oh, my God. Claire is a popular girl. And she just happens to be a lesbian. And look at all the selfies. See? She took selfies with all those friends. See? Even in swim club. But they're not mad. Just Mandy. Okay. All right. And then Claire ends up, you know, blaming it on somebody else. One of the other girls. So there was actually one decent part in this where she's kind of like trying to scare the girl. And um, so you've got like this. Uh <laughs> With the uh, more accepting of the, you know, no one's more accepting of the big body type. I get that. I I, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have anything to say about that just because I'm not super interested in promoting something unhealthy. And we're also talking about superhero books, right? I just, I, I can't, I can't relate. So anyways, um... I, I just, no, uh, we see her like literally walk off the field. So she doesn't just walk off the field here. She just doesn't want to play. So she leaves gym class, just like she just doesn't want to take the SATs. So she just leaves like there's nothing good. I have to say really about this story. And that's the sad part is we're getting to the part where I actually thought was pretty funny. This is the only funny part of the whole story. She's like, you know, she's saying, oh, I heard you didn't go to college, right? No, we don't go to college. We go under an initiation. And she starts scaring the girl, right? It's pretty barbaric by earthling standards. I win, or to win, I will summon the power of my ancestors. Then I will assume my true form, destroy my enemies, or be ripped into shreds and tossed into the cosmos to the as a rat among the stars, a rod among the stars, whatever. It's funny. She scared her. Yeah, that's as good as it gets. Yeah. Yeah, that that's all I can really say. I wish it was better. A lot of it is told through text. Enough of it that it drove me crazy. Like, it can be used. You know, I don't mind it somewhat. You know, people talk through text all the time. It's pretty normal. Um, But... Not all the time. 
I guess maybe, again, this book was never made for me, and that's okay. I have no issue with that if they know their audience. As long as you know your audience, and that's what I respected so much about mom, is it knew its audience and knew what it was looking for. It knew that what it was looking for was a female audience, and it worked out really well, and it turned out pretty decently, in my opinion. But I feel like this is trying to be so many different tropes. They have no idea who their audience is. They're trying to relate to people that like superhero comics, for one. Teen Titans Go, maybe, because of the more popular show and the way that she talks. They're trying to relate to heavy set people, people that feel like they don't fit in, people that feel like they're maybe gay, people that feel like they're uh, like food and they're heavy. Like, why not make it, you know, I said it was a missed opportunity about beauty standards and it was a missed opportunity about eating disorders. Why not go with an emaciated girl and talk about anorexia and bulimia? Those are real issues. Why not talk about some sort of medical disease and give people empathy for somebody heavier? But instead, we see her shoving her face with food all of the time. This is Dick Grayson, by the way. That's Raven. It's Garth. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, that's that's Lincoln. That's Garth and that's that's Cyborg. But um, yeah, I just I don't have a lot to say because it was that boring. And boring is about the worst thing. Ugh. Yeah. So anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think. I um, I'm not even going to finish this review. It's not worth it. I would rather stop, make a video about something fun and talk about something fun with you guys and waste any more minutes on this trash fire that has no purpose, no audience, and no, hmm, no moral, no, no theme, no, no inspiration. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.